Liftoff. Propulsion continues to be normal. Our CPT repression looks good. Dollar right now. Water towers fly! Yes! go down phenomenal. Water towers fly and feed off. Yikes. You bet. Okay. We don't need any more of these. Hey, everybody. Welcome to NSF Live. I'm Stephen Marr. This is the show where every week, every Saturday, about 3 o'clock, we go over all the space flight news that's going on all over the world. Um, there's probably one major thing that's on everybody's mind this week. Yes, that's right. Starliner did not fly. Um, <laughs> all right. And on to other news. Uh, this is probably going to be uh, kind of a special episode where we focus mostly on starship it's been a very busy week down there at starbase and we have uh, just the special guest for that uh you guys have probably already seen parts one and two of the videos and if you haven't well make sure you do uh we have special guest tim dodd the everyday astronaut over here how you doing tim hey i'm good how are you guys doing very good and good, good. A uh, close friend of Tim's and a uh, longtime Starbase visitor, Jack Byer, over here on my other side. What up? What up? Hey, hey Jack. <laughs> Jack, yeah. by the way, is directly below me. So if he does anything too bad, I'm going to just be stomping and hopefully try to ruin his audio <laughs> and see if we can get yeah. some ceiling falling on him or something. Okay. Oh, so you, you guys went, are. You went up there. Oh. To, you went up there to set up and I just heard like a series of crashing. I was like, are you okay? Are you, did you die? Are you all right? What's going on? I don't even want to admit this, but I picked up my brand new starship and it, a piece of it, something happened. I will fix it. Oh, I no. don't, things happen. don't tell starship 3d. Don't tell starship 3d. Which this model is it? <laughs> It's it's SN11, which is hilarious. Like I purposely asked for it because I'm like I never got to see it in real life, so I might as well like or like you know didn't get to see it fly, so I might as well have 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 it here to just haunt me for the rest of my life. But this is the this is the nose cone of it. It's insane. They're so big. Yeah, that's yeah. really big. And the, the attention to detail is insane. But yeah, the aft section's down there right now. Do a little work to do a little work to fix it up. But yeah. So that you had a rug. That's what you're saying. Broke. You had a, a minor. It just came. It just came apart because it all is magnetically held together, and I picked it up a little wrong. But yeah, I'm well, fine. Um, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> now, I, I got my first visit. I know you guys have been down there a million times. I got to visit Starbase for the first time. Uh, I just got back uh, about a week and a half ago, um, and one of the first things that really struck me um, wasn't necessarily the size. I mean, the size of things is immense, but you know, I've been to Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station a bunch, and I've been kind of close to rockets and stuff. But what really struck me was how much work is going on. Everywhere you look, there's people everywhere working on different projects. Every day, things are changing. And so we've you know, we've seen the video of the, the interview with Elon Musk, and there's a lot of awesome information. If y'all haven't seen it, make sure you watch it um, multiple times because you're not going to catch everything the first time. But we can al already see how much has changed. Just it's like, when do you when did you film that? What? Not but just over a week ago is Friday night, like a week ago, Friday. So eight days ago. Yeah. And we had Starship was in is still in was still in pieces. You know, yeah. there's no engines on yeah. either vehicle or the bo the booster was in half, had no grid fins. The stand wasn't even, to, you know, the launch mount wasn't even assembled. Mm -hmm. And then literally less than a week later, it was all out on the launch pad, which is just like, come on. That's right. In the video, he was talking about uh, how they're they're going to uh, take stage zero out to the pad and, and how yep. they're going to put the grid fins. Actually, one of the grid fins was being installed while y'all were talking, right? Yep. Yep. Exactly. It's I just, just watched, it's just. Go I ahead, just Jake. watched the uh, the second video and some highlights from that that are just mind boggling because he said eight days ago is when it was shot. Elon says we're gonna put the booster on the stand and you're like that would be crazy and Elon's he says uh, we're gonna try and get the table on the on the legs but we might we might not succeed and, and then also you walk by like the aft section of SN or, of ship twenty. And uh -huh. it, it was like, 
the ship 20 wasn't even fully stacked like and then they put the nose cone on and uh, and like and got the got it all out to the pa- i mean just yeah the amount of things that happened this week are absolutely crazy it's really cool that this video well the three videos that you've done two that are out already are like it's like a super encapsulated moment in time in this mm-hmm. whole process like not only is it there not only are they like we've got an info dump on all kinds of stuff that we've been wanting because you know it's been so while since there's been a starship presentation so while so long whatever <laughs> it's been so it's been so long since there's been a starship presentation uh so this info dump was really much needed but also like aside from all of the delicious info nuggets um we we really got like a distinct moment in time of like you walking around this factory going in the tent seeing all the little bits and bobs and just chatting with elon about you know how this whole system works and we see so much of this whole process but there's a lot we also don't see and so that was just really cool to to get to kind of take the take the rib i don't know take the cover off of everything and look look under the hood yeah was it awesome was it as awesome as i as i as i think it would be <laughs> Yeah, I mean the it's it was I think it was a really cool time to be there. I mean, as far as you know, even imagine like three or four days later after stuff started rolling out, it it would have missed a lot of the cool stuff, you know. And then once it's out mm-hmm. the gate, like it's you know it, it's then everyone's gonna have you know cool footage of it. Like there's gonna be amazing footage, but to see it being able to be put together and being assembled and stuff uh, was was crazy. And I, I didn't you know really know what to expect when. Um, when I when I got asked like, hey, can you be here Friday? I was like, I can be there Friday. You know, I just didn't know. I didn't quite think that they're going to be at that stage yet. I didn't quite think yeah. we'd be seeing. You know, last I had it was only like three days before that the booster didn't look nearly that finished, and the you know yep. there weren't nearly that many Raptors on site, and there wasn't like the heat shielding was not half done. You know, it's like so I was just expecting like, oh, I don't know, whatever, it'll be cool, and then walking around, it's like holy crap you know and then by the end of the interview you know just that two hour span at the at starbase you're seeing changes already like just from walking from one end to the other you're already seeing like progress being made yeah. it's just did, it's did just you expect nuts. to get to go inside those tents i mean i feel like that's that's sort of like the holy of holies in there like you know we try to from the outside we try to you know peek our camera around corners and stuff and and just see what's going on in there but that was unprecedented to see all those raptors lined up in there and you know, well, all three tents. You know, they had the domes and the and the nose cones and everything. Was that a yeah, complete I didn't know, surprise to you? I didn't know what to expect, so I, you know, I got um, I I brought with me like you know my my nicest camera. I brought with me my a twelve K Ursa, and I was really excited to like shoot with that. And then you know I have it on this big beefy tripod and everything. And and then uh, you know I get told, hey, um, are you able to carry that around? I'm like. Because I thought we maybe just be like in a conference room or something, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I mean, probably not. But that I you know I brought this and I just hold up like one of those little pocket Osmo, uh, you know, Osmo pocket gimbals. Uh-huh. And I'm like, but I have this. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, just just bring that. And so like, luckily I did just bring it because it was two hours of walking around the factory that there's no, you know, if I was shoulder mounting or whatever, it would have been honestly a lot worse. <laughs> and there's like yeah. no way, you know, I would have been so focused on trying to use that camera as opposed to like engaging in conversation. And yeah. so having the stupid little Osmo and just having it, you know, just holding it out to the side ish was uh, worked out pretty good, but I didn't know what to expect. And, and uh, yeah, once they're like, yeah, no, you're going to want to go mobile. Let's, let's keep it nice and light. I was like, okay, sounds good. And then I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be crazy. And it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah. a lot of times we get obsessed with having like the best possible camera for a thing because we all want it to be as good as it possibly can be but the best camera is the one that you have on you and if you can 100%. if you can run and gun better with that little little deal i mean it looked great it sounded good it was a great great interview i mean there's a reason the guy that you can see sometimes in the videos that has the big chonkin camera uh mm-hmm. like you can see he's got an easy rig it's like a big coat hanger looking thing that comes over his head and like <laughs> has a bungee cord type deal that straps to the camera and so it takes the weight off and he can do like cool moves and stuff uh that it's he has that because that you know lugging that thing around is no joke so i think you made the yeah. right call there yeah, yeah, this it's, what we're looking at right here is super cool. Like, and Elon was even saying, like, well, you know, whatever you can see with the telephoto lens is, you know, there was the, the concerns with ITAR and stuff. He's like, I mean, you can see it all from outside the gate. So, really, there's not a whole lot of concerns here. 
Yeah, um, that surprised me like crazy. Just because I thought like no matter what, I just assumed it's one thing if the public shares it, you know, and it's another thing like if I don't know if I'm walking around inside. through there with the yeah, yeah. I just thought like I was like okay, this is all gonna get cut, you know. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't, and and a lot of that was directly Elon's call. Like he's just like no, <laughs> I want this shared, you know. That's yeah. honestly amazing, and and I I really want to while I but you know before I forget, I really just want to say. Um, you know, thanks to for getting this out so rapidly. It's got to have been a huge, you know, editing ordeal to get something like this out, and not only so quickly, but you know, you want it to be good because it's an interview with Elon Musk where you're walking around the factory, so you want to put as much love into it as you can, but you want to get it out as quick as possible because you know you wait another day and it's even more out of date because even I think <laughs> Elon even said in the interview like this whole process is a is a work in process. And we may say something one week that turns out to be different or changed or wrong the next week, or is very clear about that. And so, way to go, getting this thing edited and done and, and put out. And you know that is just it, the coinciding the coinciding with with the full stack. It like, just really, it all worked out. So I'm sure that was a pain, but a little bit of inside baseball there. I know it's like not about Starship <laughs> itself, but no, like we're we all make videos here. We all make stuff. You know, Stephen, Tim, we all. That's what we do, right? We make content and yeah yeah just just props for that yeah for Thank getting you. it out so fast and he and he did say, i think he used the phrase uh grain of salt uh i don't know what four and a half times <laughs> something like <laughs> it that was definitely, yeah. it was a lot of like whatever i say right now may not be true in a week um but i and, do, don't you remember the good old days when we were arguing over whether or not the grid fins would eventually fold down <laughs> like like a week ago that was like right. the topic on the internet it was like it was like oh surely at some point and i would have if you had asked me at the time whenever you know we first saw them uh going on actually it was i guess it was right after you uh filmed this and it was like okay this is just an inter iteration kind of thing at some point surely they'll fold them down but in part one he he talked about how it makes no sense to fold them down because it doesn't really hinder your uh your performance going up enough you know and in adding the, the extra part is unnecessary the the extra part to fold them down fold them back out you know, it's unnecessary right was that a was that a surprise to you or did you is that what you expected oh i i did not expect that at all and i think you know a lot a lot of the there, there's a lot of people that you know are asking about the drag of that you know i think the drag is relatively minimal you know the, the grid mm -hmm. fins aren't people sometimes misconceive that they're that they're giant air brakes you know they're really just a fin that's sliced up into a million pieces not a million mm -hmm. but you know a lot of pieces and then just kind of glued together in a waffle maker um but they they it's not a, my concern wouldn't have been the amount of drag that they had while deployed that would have been like oh i'm sure it's minimal my concern would have been like you know if again i kind of mentioned it in the interviews like those of you that have played ksp kerbal space mm -hmm. program know like if you have your center of of lift you know or, or your aerodynamic features in front of your center of mass you can have a really bad day because all <laughs> of a sudden you get this you know feedback loop where your if your angle attack increases it starts putting more force on the grid fins which then increases your angle of attack which then gives it more you know and next thing you know you can be completely upside down like my that was my concern with with the thing but then he mentioned like as long as they're within uh, you know, a degree of a uh, minimal amount of angle of attack, especially in like the lower portions of atmosphere. It seems like it's mm -hmm. apparently fine. <laughs> like, I guess we'll see. Like, that's just one of those things. It's like, I, I'm, sh I'm sure they have run the numbers and the simulations and everything is fine, but it just seems crazy to me. It just seems like one of those, like you're breaking a major, a major rule there, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Was there yeah, any like flying part... an airplane backwards? Was there? I know there's still the third part of the series of the three videos to come out. Um, was there any part, I guess, of what we've seen so far, or I guess maybe the whole thing, that where you, you like, you're in the edit and you're like, oh crud! Like, I wish I'd done this differently, or I wish at this moment I'd asked X. Because like, you know, every time I'm I'm meeting someone new or whatever, or I'm like having a really in-depth conversation with a friend, you know, you walk away and then 20 minutes later you're like. Oh, I should have said this. Like, why didn't I think of that then? Uh, is there? Did you have any of those kind of moments during? Because I, I gotta imagine it's gotta be hard to keep things rolling and keep the conversation going. I mean, that's really your your job during this this situation, right? Yeah, it's and 
there's always going to be uh there's a term for it spirit of the stairway which is like that sense of like when you leave a conversation you're like walking down the stairs and you're like oh i should have said this you know like mm -hmm. uh you know that's that's the term that, that I, I like to use and um and and it is you know when you're going back and especially like when i'm fixing audio and stuff and i'm listening to the same thing like 10 times yeah there's a lot of like just oh, why did i say it like that or why did i say that of course mm. um but the i think i was more focused on you know i, I think a traditional you know like a, a traditional interview would be you know sit and have a, a list of things that you want to ask and and kind of go down the checklist and i find that elon you know, the key for him is like, get him, get him moving and, and let him just spew because he tends to just kind of, he, yeah. he's a conversationalist. Like he wants to converse about the stuff he's talking about. So I, I try to keep those questions in the back of my head and, and just focus on, on keeping him engaged and keeping him like thinking and, and, and just try to keep the conversation rolling more organically in that sense. Because then I was hoping that we'd start, start on topics. Like, I don't, I would have never asked about stage separation. Yeah. You know, but he and ended that was up, a really interesting part of it. Yeah. I couldn't yep. believe that, you know, like that blew my mind that they're basically going to Starlink fling the upper stage off of it, you know, yep. um, makes sense, it's wild. I guess, yeah, because, it's, yeah, it's because the base of, of Starship is, is flush with the engine. So like my first thought was, you know, like with, with Falcon nine, the, the second stage engine bell goes into the interstage so if you were to do this rotation thing what if the engine bell scrapes against the interstage on its way out but that's not the case with starship right 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 so that's what's going to be yeah i mean it's that's going to be just crazy to see and you know looking at some of those photos that we had just even of the stacking yesterday from now this is i, I don't know i don't see any like guide pins or anything there's nothing and it There's just nothing. looks like it two. Like it, it just looks like two flat surfaces, one on top of another. It's wild. Yeah, I'm like, sure there's some kind of taper, you know, like or some kind of thing that that, you know, it makes it so the second stage stays on the interstage a little, you know, precisely or something. But from what I can tell, it seems to be like you're gonna have 1.5, at least 1.5 G's squeezing those things together. I guess they're not really gonna go anywhere. But I'm nervous about like things like shear loads and you know wind yeah, like shears and things movement. like that, like yeah like oh, yeah that would I, be my first question there is like what about wind shear and then it's like well what about beefy starship tim what about that it's so beefy <laughs> it doesn't care about you <laughs> it just doesn't care it just doesn't care that's <laughs> it must not and that's the crazy thing is like this so much of this stuff is a rethink on the on the traditional it's it's the classic elon like why were we doing it this way like just and it'll, if the answer is well that's what everyone's done then like that's just a classic like well then let's rerun those numbers you know let's yeah yeah like of course you know and you know you look at how what some of the things that he's reconsidered and, and redone with tesla um you know are, are just like things where he's clearly going like why does everyone do this do we have to do that i don't think we have to do that anymore right let's just get rid of it you know <laughs> like, yeah and it, I, we're seeing that to the extreme here because of the the fluidity of the program like if it's you know the falcon 9 as he mentioned you know they didn't really quite have that much oh actually that's part three spoiler uh, you know, he kind of mentions that, uh, you know, they didn't really quite have that much freedom with, with Falcon 9, you know, because it was already going to be kind of flying payloads and doing things. And they had to kind of get it more right the first time. And of course, they iterated on it, but not nearly as aggressively as this. And there's a lot of freedom for them with this to literally do whatever they want and try everything mm -hmm. uh, and just and just take the wildest ideas and see what works and see what doesn't. And it's just I mean, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah, I think I think yeah. that's one of the one of my you know, moments that I really enjoyed. And hey, we're approximately, what, 19 minutes in, I'm gonna mention shuttle. You, you talk about <laughs> shuttle a little bit in there and Elon said, you know, the, one of the problems with it, or maybe you said it, was that they didn't get to iterate with shuttle. They did three test flights or whatever it was, six test flights, and then uh, I think it was three, maybe four. They're like, okay, now it's operational, it's operational, it's a shuttle, it's, a, it's our space bus, it's gonna do all the things that we, you know, launch twice a month, et cetera. And it's like, mm, if But it never flew without to, people. Yeah, right. exactly. And, exactly. And, yeah. So yeah. If, if only they had been able to sort of do a, a more Starship like test campaign and be like, okay, well, maybe what if we do this? What if we change this? And been a little bit more forgiving with themselves, they would have been able to make the shuttle better. But now we don't have to worry about that because Starship, like Chris B always likes to say, is really shuttle 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. I wish that they had, you know, been able to baron it in a sense where, you know, baron flew uh, uncrewed and completely yep. autonomously on its only flight. 
I, it's it's a shame that the shuttle never tried to adapt that, but it just wasn't set up. The program was not set up from the beginning to to support anything like that. That was just simply. I think shuttle eventually option. got the the capability to do an autonomous landing, but I don't think it it definitely didn't have it at first, and I don't know. That'd be a good question for Chris G or Chris B, but I maintain that Baran was not uh, was not better than the shuttle, and I'm going to put a nightbot command in here. Farewell. Look up the farewell <laughs> dust. <dossier. laughs> oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'll get off my soapbox. Um, was there any... I mean, I'm sure there was several of these. Was there any moment during the tour where you were just like, pop, like you just couldn't... You just couldn't really wrap your mind around what you saw, or I'm sure that again, I'm sure there were several, but it was like, is there anything that sticks out into your mind as like a wow mm -hmm. moment while you were? The, yeah, the two that were just completely like surreal for sure was seeing like the raptor forest, you know, just a forest yeah. of raptors. I just didn't expect it to be that much yet, you know. Um, yeah, it was just insane. Uh, that blew my mind, and then also seeing the the nose cone up close and personal, you know, like going right up where they were working on the heat shield was like just the coolest thing ever. I just, you know, I just didn't expect it. I didn't know, um, you know, what it would look like up close. And um, yeah, it was, it was awesome though to see. Yeah, there we go. There's the the nose cone there. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. I don't know. It, that blew my mind. Um, seeing it like that, you know, we've only seen previously with my own eyes, I'd only really seen a handful of small tiles, you know, on, on 15 was the most tiled one before this. And to see it at this state was just like, holy crap. It just, you know, yeah, it just properly blew my mind yeah. and made it really feel more like, wow, you guys are, you're working on it. Like you, this is, this is a thing, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Seeing the, the pattern of like the square tiles and the hexagonal tiles on the, on the, on the static arrow and seeing like more curved tiles on the on the aft flaps and stuff like that. It's like, okay, this just got really, really, really real. Cause like you said, Previously, we've only seen, you know, maybe a couple hundred tiles max on just a, a flat barrel section, nothing. And then over the last two weeks or so, we started to see, you know, a curved tile pop up on this nose cone there, a curved tile pop up over here and on this flap. And then bingo. Now it's just like they flipped a switch all of a sudden. The, the surge is real. Yeah. Yes. It's like they, they figured something out and now they've, now they've got it and just power through. Um, but is, what's, what's fun oh, about still even even at this point though, what's fun is you keep hearing over and over like this humil the humility of Elon being like, but we're just you know nothing set in stone, you know. I think we we yeah. uh, as the community tend to take some of this stuff as gospel, like well Elon said, you know. But it's mm -hmm. like and here's over and over reminders of like that's what we're thinking for right now, but like literally we're not like they're not married to anything. It's like it seems like everything is still on the table. You know, if one flight does this, the next flight might, you know, might totally do something different. And it's like, we're going to have to get used to this sense of, you know, trying to keep up with them almost in the, in the sense of, we, you know, not getting super uh, set and like, oh, this is how it is now. It's like, this is how it is right now, but not in a week, you know, and, and that's just going to yeah. be different. It seemed like, yeah, some of the some of the questions uh, and references to whatever they that we thought they were doing, he'd kind of like sit back and be like, well. Yeah, we may have said that at some point, but this is a completely different week now. <laughs> you know, yes. like that's that's changed. That's that's out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's one of those things like I you know, I, I want to remind people like that's also the reason why we can see crazy things happen too, is is because they'll just be like, Well, let's just let's just throw the whole stack up there today, you know, this mm -hmm. week. Yeah. I, I think that was a, you know, the surge was literally like a we just want to see it stacked, period. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Let's just see it stacked. You know, that's the kind of the sentiment we keep like getting. And, you know, something like that, when you look at, you know, uh, like SLSs or a more traditional development, building the the launch tower and or, you know, stacking a vehicle like that will take months and years, you know, and this took a week. You know, we saw pieces of the rocket not even assembled together and yeah. pieces of the launch pad. And then in a week, it, it became one unified piece. And it's just, I'm just I, I've never seen anything like this, you know? I think one of my favorite parts of the discussion, uh, Chris Warner pointed it out in the chat. I'll throw his comment up there. But uh, where, where they were, or y'all were talking about uh, they're washing out uh, their laundry in public, you know? And like you were asking, like, how different is this from traditional? And, and it's like, it's, it's very different because there's not been another rocket developed like this just out in the open and you you know you can see all their successes and failures so 
so publicly, you know, and of course, SpaceX is the kind of company that, that attracts people. So, um, maybe, you know, maybe there are things like this going on in other launch provider, you know, development factories or whatever, but we just, it's either too far away from public, you know, whatever, we don't know where it's happening or whatever, but yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's like, this is all out in the open. We could see everything. And, uh, I don't know. They don't seem to mind. You know, because, you know, we, we relish in their successes and their failures, you know, like it's like we're cheering them on. I kind of think when Elon said, you know, like the go ahead, if you want to copy this, go ahead, like only a fool or something like <laughs> you have to be a fool to copy this. I think yeah. that's kind of the attitude is like they're sprinting so fast. Even if you copy them step by step, you're going to be years behind still. Even if yeah. you literally like tried to copy exactly what they're doing step by step, you're just going to be years. He, I think he just really. The company just really doesn't even care about the others right now because they're like, no, we're we're, we're figuring this out in real time, you know, and and you might too. <laughs> Good luck, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're doing our thing, and and um, well, it, it, and that's one of the things I've always liked is that they do invite others to try to do the same thing. I mean, they don't want to be the only ones doing it, uh, as it is right now. It seems like they are, but um, you know, hopefully yep. other, other launch providers will step up, maybe some brand new entrants into the market, you know, will come along and, and maybe have a competitor rocket or maybe, you know, make some aspect for Star Trek. Cause ever since the very first, uh, presentation at the astronautical Congress, what was it, what was it called down in Mexico yeah. city? And, you yep. know, it was like, we don't want to build every aspect of like life support and habitats and everything, you know, that there needs to be other people come along and help with those aspects. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. They just want to be the, the transport, you know, the way to get that stuff there affordably and, and realistically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. Jack, we we've, we've seen the progress in just the last two years of, of what this place has, has transformed, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, it was less it's than funny because like there's a, there's a tower of welding robots behind Elon in a massive production tent. And less than two years ago, it was like, they're banging Starhopper together in the, basically in the middle of a field. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yep. It's absolutely crazy <laughs> the amount of progress that the two years have brought. I mean, I, I probably say it a lot. I hope people that, that are watching our streams aren't like, oh, there goes Jack about his two years speech again. But no, it's really like <laughs> two, two years ago, we were watching Starhopper in front of, you know, like this, in front of like a minimal tank farm on Andy's roof with a flare stack and no walls, barely a fence that blew down every time they fired the engine still kind of does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, it's just, it's just absolutely crazy how, how far we've come in two years. It feels almost like a decade worth of development. And it just makes me always wonder always what is the next two years have in store for us? Cause it's yeah. just, it's going to be awesome. And I'm just, I'm just so glad that Starhopper is still around, right, Tim? Like, I'm glad they didn't oh. scrap it. Seeing Starhopper around the launch site, and you, you too, Steve. You know, like, yep. seeing Starhopper around the launch site is is really good context for the history of the program, and um, it's really cool. I, I cherish the memory that you and I were able to sort of watch that event together and unfold in real time on top of of uh, of Andy's roof. Yeah. Now, was, did, did y'all meet it, down yeah. there uh, at Starbase? I guess it wasn't called Starbase at the I time. Think but is that is that where y'all met? We met we the first met time before. ever at a SpaceX event at the headquarters. I think it might have been the Dear Moon event, which uh, is even cooler no, now that I. Yeah. Was it Commercial Crew that, or was it Dear Moon? I think it was that Commercial Crew one where where we got to see Dragon, you know, okay, kind of yeah. go around the Dragon capsule, and yep. I think that's when I I met you, and then I I think we hung out a little at, at Dear Moon too. But that was yeah. yeah that was 20 what 2018 yeah, yeah and then, that was and then 2018. we really we really bonded on top of andy's roof in the sweltering sweltering sun getting carried away by mosquitoes day after day <laughs> after day and the because now i feel like now if something is going to happen on a given day you know if we think they're going to launch or static fire or whatever it usually happens on or around that day you know plus or minus a day or two like I think yeah. stacking would have happened on the day we all expected it, except there was wind. So it happened the next day. Right. But back, I feel mm -hmm. like it's changed a lot in Starhopper days. It was like, 
it could go tomorrow. It could go next week. It could go next year. <laughs> like, it was just like Groundhog's Day. Every day you wake up and you're like, it's not going again. All right, cool. Jump off cliff. Next day, hey, it's, like, it's not going again. All right, cool. Drive off cliff. Like, <laughs> Oh, it was so painful. Honestly, it was like, we just had no idea. We had no idea what to expect. We had no, we had no, like there's zero communications. We were just all, everything was new. We were all new to every bit of it, including SpaceX. So the the road closures and things weren't like reliable sources of information. They were hardly published or posted. And it was just, yeah, it was just, you you just didn't know. Look in the background there, Jack, that picture, the video in the background behind Star Hopper and you see Starbase. It's like, there's nothing. There's like yeah. a tent. And it's just, yep. wow. This is, everybody, you're looking at right now, you're looking at suborbital pad A. That's what that is. <laughs> that is suborbital a pad fence. A. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just a mound of dirt, no concrete, no tank. Fun. Like it's just it's mind boggling how much it's been built up over the over the the last two years. It's just it's just been two years. It's just two years. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Oh, like I want to know. I would love to know some of the other companies what they're thinking and and what's being talked about behind closed doors. You know, are they? Does this scare them? Do they still think it's too risky? Like, especially, you know, a company that's that's well funded like like Blue Origin, uh, who built I mean, they built let's let's give them credit. In two years, they've done an insane amount of ground build. You know, they they built an impressive launch site and you know, expanded their factory like crazy. Now, mm-hmm. unfortunately, that factory is mostly empty <laughs> or more empty it than hurts. I think most of us. It hurts it, my it, head. It, it really it, hurts like, my head. I would love to know what what they're saying right now behind closed doors. You know, some of the some of the leadership there, because they got to be going oh. like, guys, we gotta we gotta step this up. We gotta catch yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, I don't we even think that. I, don't, I bet you it's more like, maybe I'm wrong. I bet you it's more a little bit Kool Aid drinky, where it's like, no, they're 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 wrong. We're doing it the right way. We're good. Everything's great. You know, I don't know. Sometimes sometimes I wonder about. Uh, about blues upper some... management, just just based on like what some of the stuff Eric Berger has been saying about uh, like how it's really blue Honeywell or whatever they've been called. Like it's it's yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. Right. I, I hope I hope they realize that you know they need to pedal to the metal in the same way that SpaceX is. And I'm sure with the whole human landing system contract going the way that it did, I bet I bet uh, there's a bit of a renewed focus around uh, around Corn Ranch out there in West Texas, but. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hope I hope some of the other companies are being inspired by it and not just not just sitting back and thinking, oh well, uh, you know, they're not doing it the way it's always been done, and the way it's always been done is the right way, and so just waiting, you know, waiting for it to waiting not for, work to prove them wrong almost. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I'm not. kind of. I that's what my fear is that that is actually the conversation is still just like doubling down and be like, well, no, 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 like this. I mean, but but it is risky. Like what SpaceX is doing is insanely risky and it's extremely oh, yeah. you know capital intensive and if you didn't have high operating revenue and the promise of you know starlink being like a you know once they're really making serious money off starlink that you know i think the people writing the checks at spacex are like okay i hope that goes online soon so we can actually pay for all this stuff oh, yeah. but i think it i think they're you know they're they're pretty fortunate to be able to have that you know to lean back on and to be able to risk so much of it as opposed to other companies, you know, are, are just trying to get their revenue stream going. And, you know, like Rocket Lab is really the only other one that I can even see operating remotely in this manner, because at least they're, you know, they're flying, they're launching, they're, they have paid customers. Um, and they're trying to step up their game and, you know, and do Neutron, you know, and, and they're taking a big leap of faith. And it'll be really fun to see how they develop that vehicle. Will it be rigid, you know, like more traditional or will they do kind of a a little bit more, you know, riskier path with that. I don't, you know, it'll be really fun to see. It'll be really fun to see because I think they would be ones to follow more in in this, in these footsteps than than anyone else at this point. Yeah, it's uh, it's, you know, I want to see more rockets flying. I want to see more rockets of this class flying. It'd be really cool to get Vulcan online as soon as possible. To get uh, to get New Glenn on online as soon as possible, and just more rockets, please. Yes. Yes, more rockets, not less. A hundred percent. So, so you, so y'all, y'all have been uh, covering Starbase for super long time. Is there, is there some, is there some kind of like a memory, whether it's like specifically Starship related? Is there some something that you guys remember just where you had the best time? One hundred fifty meter hop. 
Uh-huh. Star Hopper, 150 the first meter. One? Yeah. Yep. I yeah. think so yeah, too. The, 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 Where the water towers can fly quote comes from. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of people think that was me. That was actually that was Tim. That was our boy yeah. Tim because Tim and I were standing next to each other on Andy's roof in Boca Chica Village, yep. and uh, and my audio picked up Tim's elation, <laughs> which I'm really really glad it did because it's an yeah. iconic quote. That's there's a reason in our intro. It, it is along with such classics as SCE to Ox and Yikes Concur. You bet we don't need any more of these. It's right. because it's an iconic statement. It like it deserves to be there among right. those other statements. And yep, oh, here, yeah, here, here we go. go. Wait, here, here it comes. Go. Come on. Oh yes! So yes! Oh my God! It's actually flying! Yes! Oh yes! No way! Wait, he's about to lose his mind. He's about to no lose his mind. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, yes! I can't believe it! Dude, it's happening! There's me. No way! Yes! Oh, that's gonna be humans landing on Mars someday! Look at that thing! Look at that thing! Yes! That is Lance Soft, baby, please! Please, Lance Soft! Oh, my God! That looked nice and controlled. It even did a little roll for us just to show off. Just to show off. Now it's like oh, something flew off. I just saw something fly Something off. did fly off. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, shut up, Jack. It's yes! fine. Everything's fine. Oh, <laughs> baby! <laughs> there we go. They did it! Yes! Yeah! Yes! There's his mind blast. He lost his mind fly! officially. All right, I'm getting these photos online. Dude! And there's the statement. No there you go. way! Oh, SpaceX, <laughs> you did it! Elon Musk, you're nuts, and I love it. Yes! Holy cow. <laughs> oh, all that hard work, yeah, and they there's... can do what people said. It was silly. Look at that. That, that, oh. I mean, that, I'm, I'm almost teary-eyed. Like, that was, I, I'm glad that everybody could hear the full audio of, yeah. of that, because, uh, you know, you, all you hear is the edited water towers can fly. You don't hear me screaming in the background, they did it! Oh my God! And then Tim says, "Water towers can fly." And my statement is, "I gotta go get these pictures online." And it's like, Dude, you nerd, take, like take in the moment for a second. Like, what are you doing? Come on! Like, water towers can fly, dude. You need to accept this information. Oh yeah, man! Yeah. I think. Dude, you're screaming I, I, into I your think... mic. You've blown out chat's ears. So please move your mic oh, away from your mouth. That's my bad. Sorry, and guys. I got excited. To chat. Apologize to chat. I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry. Uh, but, I think, but yeah, that that I I just love I love hearing your excitement in that moment. And uh, as as somebody who I have yelled things and then heard myself on other people's audio and been like, oh crap, I'm sorry, I ruined your audio. I, I think that's what you said to me. You're like, I'm sorry, I'm on your audio. I'm like, dude, no, 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 no. Like, uh, uh-uh, no. No, it I'm, makes the I'm video. So <laughs> I'm so glad that that video exists and that audio exists. And well, honestly, it's it's pretty cool because. Uh, I think I feel like I got bit by a streaming bug that yeah. on that um, that particular launch because you oh, were there I streaming have... and I would occasionally rib in with like a bit of information. Uh oh. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I'm losing some stuff. Are we okay? Yeah. I was, I, I was I'm kind of uh, some hiccuping going on. Yeah, I was too. But I think okay. we're good now. I think, um, I think we're good. I think, I think we're good now. Cool. Um, I think the thing that's that's nuts to me is like just the other day, Ryan Chalinski and I from Cosmic Perspective were we were well, he was right by you, Jack, and and we we're talking and like we we're just looking up at it, and it's like you know this, or maybe it was me and you, Jack. I don't remember, but it's like I'm not that much more blown away now seeing how big everything is because like the scale of things like has kind of shrunk because everything now is getting so big out at Starbase. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, when you just saw Starhopper out in a field you know, standing by itself in the middle of nowhere with, you know, relatively small things for scale. Like there, there was not that sense of scale. Star, Starhopper seemed huge. You know, it seemed unbelievably big. Like, and, yeah. and to see it, you know, to drive by it when, before it flew and to see it a bunch. And then like when it finally did fly, it was like, it was just mind blowing. We just weren't like prepared for it. It just, it's something like, it just looks super surreal, super, um, 
it, it looked fake in real life with our eyeballs. Like I remember thinking like this isn't adding up, you know, and now we've like conditioned ourselves so much that even this massive new tower and the, and the full stack and everything is starting to already almost like, like, well, yeah, there's a massive tower there. Sure. You know, like, of course there is now almost, you know, no, it's yeah. crazy how quickly it gets normalized. I mean, even, even, you know how, when uh, a new product comes out, like a new iPhone or a new car model, and then you look at the previous year, the previous year's model and you're like ew that looks old immediately somehow like yeah. that's how or this one doesn't this... follow at a certain distance for the from the car in front of me i have to press the gas myself <laughs> yeah I just all like, those things that we you, normalize yeah you look at the starship full stack now and you're like oh my god like this just looks right now everything else now the plain steel ones look kind of wrong like the why doesn't why isn't it black on one side like it's it's yeah. crazy uh yes but you're right star hopper was just you, I mean, you would drive past it on Highway Four, and it's just right there. There's no no wall, just a little chain link fence, and yeah, it's just. Well, uh, there's nothing. There's nothing that will. I don't know that I'll ever see that'll compare to that. I mean, Falcon Heavy demo was amazing. SN8, yeah. of course, was amazing, and and top three on my list for sure. But Star Hopper, we just it was just it looked so weird and so surreal, and just another one of those moments where. SpaceX pulls off something that just looks like CG in real life. It's pretty hilarious. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and Steven, you had asked about like the, the favorite moment and we both concur. I think even on top of that, my favorite moment in Starhopper is actually they let us go down the, they opened the road back up only like 90 minutes after flight. Yep. And they let us like drive right down there. Like we got the go ahead from security and like we were the first besides like literally the security guards. We were the first people to like drive up to it and it yeah. still smelled like methane, like a barbecue. Oh, and wow. we were just, we got out of the car. We we're just hooting and hollering. Do you remember that? Like we kind of all just like lost our minds for a little bit. And Oh man. Yeah, oh, so I'll that... never forget it. Cause it flew. And then a, a group of us all coalesced at Andy's. Cause it was just you and I and Andy there. And then after it flew, other people who had been in the area all showed up. And so there was a group of like, I don't know, maybe 10 of us, all over at Andy's and there I we tweeted a photo of a whiskey bottle that said open in case of hop and so we were all celebrating and having a good time and uh, I forget who I think it might have been Trevor somebody somebody was like oh man like let's get some food like let's go into town and get some food and I was like I'm not going into town and getting some food I'm staying right here <laughs> and when that road opens I'm driving down that road and getting some photos and I, I, that to this day that'll be some of my you know absolutely most cherished memories because like you said, we were the first people back there at the pad. And Michael, can you show the road closure graphic? Wait for it. Yeah, wait for it. We might have put him on the spot. There. That, that is, photo. That is, a, that yeah. is a photo taken a few hours after Starhopper landed. They saved the pad. And they let Tim and myself and a small group of other people go down there and and – Normally, you can't get a nighttime photo like this down there, even back then, because the lights from the launch mm -hmm. site oh. wash out everything. And so because the launch had kicked out some of the lights, you know, the debris had killed some of the lights, mm -hmm. I, I was able to take this image. I know, Tim, you got some Milky Way images as well. It was mm -hmm. just like a really, really, really special moment because it's a photo that is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I mean, I think in the, in the next couple of days, they pulled the engine off. You know, it just wouldn't have the, the Milky Way would only have been there at that time of year with the core behind it at that time of year. It just yeah. everything mm -hmm. worked out perfectly to make that image happen. And that's just a really, a really special moment. And that's probably one of my favorite images I've ever shot or ever will shoot. And it's just I think one, one of the cool things is, is that they've, they've kept Starhopper around and and utilized it. Starhopper, if, if y'all don't know, Starhopper barks orders at the launch site now. Uh, any kind of, if there's a lightning warning or, or, you know, just whatever the, and, and I think, uh, yesterday there was some music coming yep. over the loudspeakers on star hopper. Yeah, it's also right, a boom yeah. box now, water tower, yeah. boom box, flying engine, <laughs> test stand, spaceship lighting. prototype, yeah. rocket photographer. Grandpa. Yeah. Grandpa. Lighting. <laughs> yeah. Space grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> space grandpa. <laughs> He's just around to watch his youngins. Try to learn to fly too. Yeah. Like, so, Uncle or Grandpa, we're going to orbit. You darn kids in your orbit. All I need is 150 <laughs> meters. And in my day, we had to pack ourselves on the way up and the way down. 15 <laughs> meters. 
<laughs> yeah, it was up both ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Engines on both up and down. Uh, Ascent and decent. We're both uphill. Yeah. <laughs> Powered both ways. Oh my god! All right, In the sorry, snow. Uh, <laughs> crazy so, times. Uh, there are yeah. there are a couple questions uh, that people people would like to know. Uh, I I like this one here. Alistair uh, Grantham said, uh, "What is it like being next to Elon? Because he seems like he's thinking about other stuff while you're talking to him." That's something that I've I'm still learning one around him like there'll be moments and you don't want to like interrupt his thought process sometimes you know like mm -hmm. um where you can see he's turning on something and even you might ask him a question and he'll actually keep he'll like almost ignore you for a second and he'll still be his gears will still be turning and then he'll like snap out of it and then like look at you and it's almost this like robot like computer you know turn 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 he's clearly processing clearly thinking about something and then like his attention is just like it, it is it's it's yeah it's 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 interesting to to see that and still try to like learn when is appropriate to to talk and like when it's smart to to interrupt and like when do you give him space because again it's not a normal it's interviewing elon and hanging out with him is not a normal like interview with people you know you want to give him space to talk and think and that's when some mm -hmm. of the craziest stuff comes out of his mouth so it's a little bit of patience of like letting him process and stuff but it's in general though like and what people don't always see you know behind the camera and stuff is He's actually really chill. Like he's really, he's he's funny. You know, he he's he has good a good sense of humor and you know good references like pop culture references and stuff. And, and I think dog. a lot of people miss. Yeah, a cute little dog, Marvin the Martian. You know, I think just a, I was impressed I think how the dog's able to like how the dog's able to just kind of wander around the production site and just like stays pretty close to him. You know, yeah, that was impressive. I would watch, I would watch a cartoon of that dog. You know, like some kind of dog at a rocket factory there's there's a, like a kid's cartoon in there somewhere it's yeah. too adorable a hundred percent like it's it's so fun and and it just like doesn't get in the way somehow and yeah it's so nuts yeah <laughs> little guard dog. um and tim you know you, i know you've 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 had to read super chats in your day i, I just don't want to want people to think we don't appreciate it thank you very much for all the super chats that are coming in we appreciate it um i'll point I'll point this one out here. Musical Wolves uh, wanted to know what the hardest part of making the interview vid video is. Like, what was the hardest part of that? Uh, unfortunately, this one, it was audio. Um, cleaning up the audio a good amount and really nailing it as best I could. Because unfortunately, his his microphone pack got really bad interference on the second half of the of the interview. Mm -hmm. And so, like, manually ducking and, and trying to correct and trying to use some... AI stuff that doesn't work very well. It never does. And you end up just doing it old school and ducking up the things and trying to fix it oh, up was, yeah. was the hardest part of, of the editing process. I, I think next time uh, I ever do anything like that with, with any CEO, they're going to get the one that records locally, you know? And the only, the only thing there is like, if you have two packs, this is, sorry, this is getting nerdy and video editing. Yeah, go ahead. I, think, I think people are into it. Yeah. <laughs> I am so here um, for this. Please go on. Yeah. <laughs> so wireless packs, of course, you know, when you have them, like what I did is I actually had two like Sennheiser wireless packs, one for me, one for Elon. And then in the backpack, I had just one of those Zoom H4Ns. I don't know, the wireless, like H6N, one of those little, you know, multi-channel recorders in the backpack. So that that's where they were all recording to. What's cool about that is the audio files are perfectly synced with each other. You know, mm -hmm. they, they record simultaneously and you don't have any phase cancellation or any issues audio wise. Now, what happened is I also recorded I, for myself as a total backup. I'm like, what if this dies or whatever? I also had just a, a separate lav on myself. That uh -huh. there, It's called a Zoom F1, and it records locally. I think I heard you scratch locally. it once or twice. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very likely. Um, and what's cool about that is, you know, you don't ever have any wireless transmission at all. So, you know, the, the, everything records locally. But the hard part is, um, at least when you're editing, I probably should have just slip edited this and like – and adobe audition or something but to line two different sources of audio up in like premiere they they jump by frames you have mm -hmm. you know you only have one thirtieth right. of a second of resolution to actually adjust your audio so you can get really bad phase cancellation and get this weird echoey sound so i couldn't actually really mix in my separate audio pack when when things were getting really weird and, and interference sounding uh -huh. um, so next time I, I and i need to look into that i think there is a solution i think there's even wireless packs that have built in uh, you know, local storage to local recording, and then they still transmit wirelessly. 
Um, mm -hmm. I'll probably look into something like that or, or just pre or just line up the two packs um, in pre-processing before going into premiere. Um, you know, if I do like local recording so that we don't, ha so I don't have any interference. That was the biggest sound is, is such a big deal. You know, um, uh, the, one of my, uh, someone that I really admired, Jamie Higginbotham, she's, uh, Empress Photon on, uh, is that what it is? Or Photon Empress Photon, or what is it? Photon uh, Empress. Yeah. 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 I think yeah so. Photon Empress. Um, she runs yeah. tomorrow and, and also does video production at a certain company that has an X in their name. Um, but she's always said that video is 90% audio. Yep. Oh, and wow. I, I remember hearing yeah. that back in film school is like, you know, everyone or a lot of people can shoot proficient video, but the, the thing that really, you know, makes a difference between whether people will actually watch or not is the audio, which is, you know, a lot of times when you're a camera person, you're focused like a laser on imagery, imagery, imagery. And it's like, no, it needs, it needs to sound acceptable. Cause if it doesn't, people are just going to immediately be like, this is grading. I'm going to turn this off. And for exactly. For what it's worth, uh, you know, I actually I consumed most of the b first two videos um, audio only just because I've been running around here Starbase, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. trying to catch stuff happen and shoot the lift and all of that. Which we got to start talking about all the stuff that's happened this week. But yeah, we're going point to. Being, <laughs> yeah. Point point being, um, listening to it like basically in podcast form, I didn't find it bad at all. I mean, you're walking around a factory. Anyone that's like. No, the sound is bad. It's like you're walking around the rocket factory. What do you want? Like, have, if yeah. you've ever been here, maybe, maybe it's because I've been, I've been here so much. Like, literally, when you're anywhere within a mile of this, of any of this, the build side of the launch site, all you hear is beep, 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 yes. times like 20, like 20 separate yes. individual backup beeps. And then there's a guy just like wailing on a steel ring with a hammer to get it into place. And it's just like, yeah, it's not going to be. It's not going to be like you're in a sound stage and everything is perfect and you've got a sound guy with a, with a mixer and he's riding the levels and he's got a boom microphone. No, it's you're you're <laughs> literally like it's like you, a member of the audience, get to walk around the factory with Elon and so accept the sound for what it is. You don't are you <laughs> going to go into a sauna and complain that it's hot? Like who does that? <laughs> well, and I think that's also part of the fun. This is the last thing I'll say about the interview. But like I think part of my goal with this and also with the very first interview I did was I wanted it to feel like you're there with us, you know, and almost give you this first person perspective. So the, yeah, the audio is going to be, I, I can't remove the clangs and the beeps and stuff like that's just what it's like there. And it's hard to hear them. Yeah. Like if you think it was hard to hear them, it was hard for me to hear them a lot of times. So yeah. even conversationally, because it is so loud, it was actually difficult to hear what he was saying, like almost more in real life. Like looks listening back at it, I heard things that I couldn't, understand that he said in you know in front of me i just couldn't hear him you know mm -hmm. so that's very much what it was like and um i i'm glad that i'm I, it just it was super fun though i i yeah 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 so all right so yeah. um so since the looking video forward, oh go ahead to Sorry, part three. super yeah looking forward yeah to part definitely three. and and i'm yeah, i'm wondering fun. if yeah i don't know maybe maybe towards the end of this you can maybe give us like a i don't know like a little, a morsel of something to look forward to in part three. I, I don't know. You know, that's up yeah, to you. Yeah. Um, no, definitely. But okay. So, so we've seen parts one and two and, you know, we, we were talking about how much things have changed already. So, uh, so l let's kind of go over what happened this week uh, at Starbase because it, we'll start with, I guess the next day after you recorded the video would have been when the, the launch table or stage zero or whatever we're call, calling it went out there. Right. So, um, y'all were, y'all were there for that, right? I was, um, Tim was right. I was there when, so when I was on, on that Friday, it was already there at the site. Okay. On Saturdays when it got lifted onto the, onto the stand, you know, when it got made it up to the, the legs and, um, yeah, I didn't actually see the, you know, I was, I was editing, so I, I didn't see the lift. Uh -huh. Um, but, they were talking about it that night and that's actually something that you get to see is them trying to figure out how they're going to lift it because a cool thing that i didn't realize was they say to themselves i think they said a day because they're originally going to have to reconfigure the big mega crane thing so it could lift the entire table itself but then oh, they realized yeah. if they don't they could save a whole bunch of time by not reconfiguring it and then have to configure it back to its tallest height um, if they just dual picked it and they, they had just made that Eureka moment of like, duh, we have two cranes here. Yeah. Let's just use both of them to, to pick it. Yeah. And that saved them basically an entire day. And they were really excited. The mood was really high. Cause they're like, duh, this is, 
super smart, you know, almost like, why didn't we think of it? And a lot of that stuff, I think gets overlooked because they forget like, you know, yeah. how quickly stuff's this moving. Is, they're, and... they're not strangers to doing this dual lift thing. Crane operators do this sort of thing all the time, right? I, I think, think so. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and it's a question for yeah. Doss's crane operator friend, but I bet, right, I bet yeah. you it's, it's fairly routine. They're, clearly, the operators of these two, of these both of these cranes, are extremely proficient. So you throw a task like this at them, they're going to get it done. I'll yeah. tell you, I I keep thinking that I was there like a week or two too early because I was watching that be worked on, seeing you know welding arcs, you know, inside the the uh, the launch table. I also saw the the last segment of the tower being put together but i didn't get to see it lifted you know and then like pieces of s20 and and uh and and b4 being put together and then now that i'm home but uh it's it's super awesome so what what came after uh what was after the launch table um um booster rollout i think was the next the next yeah. thing i think that was on i think that would have been that was like tuesday i think if I remember right, Is that right? That sounds right. I yeah, I got I here, so I got hard to keep on, track of which days. I got here on Tuesday and I just barely missed booster roll. So yeah, it was booster rolled on on Tuesday and ship rolled from mid bay into high bay, and I got here just in time to see it roll into the mid bay or, or mm -hmm. roll into the high bay. Sorry. Was it the booster gotcha. roll where they took uh, some GSE tanks with it, or was uh, it? Am I thinking the right thing? Uh, that was S20. That was Airship 20. Yeah, yep. so they took that a was couple. Just, that was just on Thursday that they that they had some... Oh, maybe, yeah, yeah, where they had a, a, one or two following it or whatever. And super cool. Like, it's it's smart to, you know, they also use that lift time to to throw up a new ground tank and, you know, and road closure to move the ground tanks. It's, it's smart to be doubling down like that for sure. Yeah. It's crazy because it feels like in the in the last week the sort of things that have been happening like previously one of these things would happen every other day or so and then in the last week it's been like they roll the booster they lift the booster or like whatever whatever the things are you know they they're doing things that normally would be an entire day uh and, and they're doing them at the same time like okay now we're gonna roll the ship and lift the booster now we're gonna stack it and destack it now we're gonna just like yes. it's just the pace is absolutely mind-bending yeah, on Friday it was stack the ship, unstack the ship, roll it back within, all within like, like yep, four or five yeah, hours. Yeah, a few or hours. Something. Like they they started oh, yeah. bringing it down just over an hour afterwards. Like you know there was there was some talk like well, how long is it going to stay up there? Is it going to stay up there? Are they going to work on the tiles while it's up there or whatever? And you know we're on the stream and I don't know about everybody else, but I was thinking okay we're probably getting close to wrapping here. And then all of a sudden the lifts go up and it's like. Oh, they're gonna just take it right back down. Like I, I guess they got what they needed. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, uh, I mean, it's just a lot of people. One of the most common questions that we get, let me put it that way, is no. I mean, not maybe not most common. A common question that we get in the chat queue always is like, do you think they'll build their own road? Do you think they'll build a railroad to the launch site so that they can transport stuff faster? I think one of the things that we've seen, at least in the last week, is that they're sort of proving out operationally this whole setup. And mm -hmm. it doesn't really seem like that big of a deal to roll a Starship down the street to the pad anymore on these modular self-propelled self-propelled modular transporters. Um, there, yeah. it seems at this point it's getting routine to the, to the extent where they can, yeah, they can de-stack it, load it onto a transporter and move it all in just a couple hours, not even a whole day. Well, that, and that's true. And that's one of the things that uh, Elon brought up a couple of times uh, on uh, during your interview was that it's not it's not the design part it's the manufacturing part and this is part of it you know the putting it all together and you know, rolling it down to the launch site like that's that's part of the manufacturing and they're and they're slowly but surely learning how to how to do it efficiently I guess definitely definitely and that's one of those things too like you know again looking at a more traditional way of doing things you if you only do a, a certain thing let's say 10 or 20 times ever you know you're going to not really gain any efficiency you know you might you might get better with third and fourth time or whatever and and but you'll still always set aside the same amount of time that you did from day one probably because it's like this is just how long it takes when you start doing stuff like this constantly to the mm -hmm. routinely you know it just becomes you can do it so much quicker and you know i think there is a certain efficiency in just 
having a well-oiled machine in the sense that like all your operators know how to do a lift exactly. and all your That's... people know how to do all this stuff. No problem. And it's just not a big deal anymore. Whereas opposed to the first couple times you're doing stuff like that is terrifying and it's slow, you know? Yeah. That's one of those things where I would really love to pick the brains of some folks at SpaceX in Boca Chica is like, all right, so how many, how many self-propelled transporter crews do you have? And does the same crew transport the starship every time? And so like, have they built up a level of experience to where like Joe is the master starship transporter because Joe has done it like six times or mm -hmm. is it, you know, they have a group of people. It's sometimes they rotate in and out of town. Some of them have done it a couple of times. Some of them might not, but they're still professionals who can operate those transporters. And that's really all you need to be. I don't know. I, in my head, there's a self-propelled transporter crew on site that has just been there now for a period of time. And it's like, well, this is our lives. Now we move rockets around. But yeah, I don't know. I would, I'm curious. It seems at least from the outside that they have really gained a lot of experience doing it and are now able to do it quite rapidly. I, I wonder if we'll even get to the point eventually where they don't even do a full road closure. They just sort of do an intermittent road closure. And at a point when Starship has a, a spot on the street, it can just pull out onto the street and it's just sort of creates a traffic jam. As it's it own lane. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Like like a HOV lane, but for Starship. Yeah, it just got a star <laughs> emoji in it. Yeah, right. That's yeah. I mean, I I feel like it. it I I still do. You know, you mentioned a little while ago about like a railroad and stuff or a, a secondary road. I still would like to see a better way to you know because closing on the beach every time you have to do anything isn't ideal. And the yeah. road is you know the road needs some work, some massive work. It would be cool mm -hmm. if they did have a secondary system that that you know didn't disrupt um or that i i still think the smartest thing to do eventually would be to actually just have that road closed to the public period and have a, an alternate route to the beach for the public get out know? no i don't like this i don't like this at all get out why why would you why would you say such a thing <laughs> no absolutely <laughs> not because the, the whole reason we have the views that we have is because there's a public road and a, and a public oh, beach right I there see. right and, right, right, right. I was like, that's true <laughs> I, you know, I don't, That's true. I, 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 I'm but sure some of the locals like, are grumpy about having to have the road closed down and so they can't access their beach. I'm sure that's a frustration that local people have. And me, as someone who's like, we, rockets, you know, it's not yeah. a big deal when the road is closed. But, you know, I get that. I do get that. But as someone who's really cherished the last two years of this and the aspect of it, that it's roadside rocket science. I mean, we have t-shirts in the store that say roadside rocket science on it. Like, be sad if they took if they took the road away and i don't i definitely don't hold any illusions uh i mean i if the road if the current state of things does not always stay this way guess what that's that's how things work things change and you have to appreciate them while they are the way they are for you know for for what you know when you can but i think you're yeah, about to say something about safety yeah. tim i mean I, I i hear i hear that yeah i just feel like there's the the road is is in total disrepair the there's cars parked everywhere where they shouldn't be and you know it, it's dangerous it's actually you know that road technically is 55 mile an hour you know almost 100 kilometers an hour and like uh yeah. some people just don't even slow down they just still fly down that street it's like guys this is yeah you yeah. know the speed limits I need will... to be changed something needs to be ch something needs to change before something really bad i will happens. say that uh, again, another common question we get is like, "Hey, I'm going to uh, Boca Chica. What should I know, or where should I go, or what should I see when I'm there?" A lot of different answers to those questions. But one thing I would like, if you are planning on making a trip out to Boca Chica, is please, please be extremely careful driving around the site. There's workers crossing the street arbitrarily. There's people taking photos crossing the street arbitrarily. Just keep your eyes open. As you're driving around, drive slower than you think you should. Even if there's someone tailgating you, um, yeah, just be that does really careful because, because, yeah, mm -hmm. because you know it's it's the amount of people that are coming out now. It used to be a couple. You you know, I'd be out for a day shooting and you'd see a handful of people, and now you know, 20, 30 people plus. You know, that you, you can tell they they they'll show up with like a Nuke Mars T-shirt and mm -hmm. like get their camera out and start taking photos and selfies, and you're like, okay, and then couple of those yeah and then you know, now it's like 20 30 40 50 you get a lot of people and that can start to pose a safety hazard the last thing i want to see is somebody get hurt trying yeah. to mm -hmm. enjoy 
this super cool thing you know i don't want the, mm. i don't want the good thing to become a bad thing because of yeah. someone's mistake and just be careful is all is i'll, I'll shut up about it now <laughs> yeah yeah i agree I yeah that, that, that was one of the things yeah when you're driving past the production site sometimes you know if it was a busy work day there'd be there'd be employees actual space spacex employees parked on the other side of the street because there's yep not a whole, uh, not a whole lot of parking there, and yeah, so you just definitely got to be careful around there. I mean, Tim, I know you've had you had your accident out there. The guy hit you coming off the beach. I got hit by a SpaceX employee driving down Highway Four. So like the Land <laughs> yeah. Rover still has some cosmetic damage from where I got plowed into, and thank God, it's built like a tank. But uh, <laughs> yeah, just just if you spend enough time on site, just please be extremely careful, be careful. while you're out and about. Yeah, don't don't let yourself get heat roasted. And you're not paying close attention as you drive. Like, really keep your wits about you. Yeah. Well, let's talk about happy things. <laughs> like, for <laughs> instance, um, for the first time ever, we saw Starship stacked yesterday. So it's kind of a cheesy question, I think. But how did that make you feel, both of you? Whoever wants to go. Tim, go. <laughs> uh, it It didn't feel real. Like it's too tall like it's like it just <laughs> it's, too tall. it's too tall they gotta take it down. it's like you're looking like, at a huge canvas or something right it's just like yeah there, here's really, this painting yes and it, and honestly i don't think i got the just staying, i think i stayed stationary too long so i got like my eyes got complacent to it but then uh, i moved and, and went over and as i was moving you know the parallax of like you know sometimes it takes that to actually understand the scale of things it's like yeah, the, Gotcha. walking around and, and seeing it not even move on the horizon while you've just walked 200 feet you know it's like then you start to see oh this thing is huge um i had a couple moments like that where i kind of looked away you know walked around and then turned back and was like oh you know like, oh then it's big and it's crazy um mm -hmm. but it's it it was really cool just to know that after you know 50 years basically we now have the world's largest most powerful rocket that has been ever ever been assembled ever um and yeah, it, it's finally happening. You know, like there's finally a replacement. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. I'm sure there'll be there'll be people that are like, oh, they but they took it apart. The engines weren't ready, or they're taking the engines. I mean, we saw them taking Raptor engines off of uh, off Ship 20 today. I mean, yeah. And we thought they were going to do that. We thought it makes sense for them to do a proof test before they do some static fires, and all of this makes sense. But um, the fact of the matter is all of the pieces were in place yesterday for a full stack all of the engines necessary all of the components necessary the, really the only thing missing was maybe a couple hundred heat shield tiles and that's not a big deal at all so that was we'll get ian on yeah, figuring out how many were missing yeah we, <laughs> yeah we need somebody crack the whip uh but really like i agree tim it felt it felt unreal it felt absolutely utterly unreal to to see and to witness and I'm just, I'm just so incredibly glad that I could be here for it. And uh, just yeah. what a, what a day, what an absolutely amazing day. It's just for a fit it, check. It was just a yeah, fit, for check, a fit but, check. Yeah. yeah. But, but, I mean, but really, you know, just, sometimes, um, it, sometimes it seems like Elon really wants a photo op to maybe show the progress, you know, and, and I think maybe that had a little bit to do with, with the thinking, you know, I'm sure the fit check was the main thing, but it's like, it'd be really nice to be able to share some photos of this real life stacked starship for, for the world, for, for wherever you're coming from, whether you're just a space fan that really wants to see it, or you've, you've never even heard of SpaceX. And now all of a sudden you saw this picture of this humongous rocket, or maybe you're a space agency or a government or other launch providers just to have these images out there. Now that it's not a render because, you know, you see a render and it's like, yep. all right, that's cool that it will one day look like that. Yeah. But to see real photos, uh, it, it, it changes, it changes things a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Photo up yeah. or not it absolutely is meaningful because one mm -hmm. fit checks fit checks are a common thing to do and they're important to get done and two a, like a photo op imp like isn't a bad thing it's a good thing to show the world hey look how close we are like that's a that's mm -hmm. a meaningful thing and I'm, and you know it's not a bad thing to have a photo op and show hey look we're super extra close. Here's the full thing. This is what it would look like. Look, we're good at stacking it. We're good at, you know, working towards our goal. We're, we say we're going to make progress and we 
make the progress. Look, we've done it. I don't know. I, I think uh, it was it is incredibly brilliant thing to do. Yeah, and, and it, we were getting and uh, several. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, no, we were getting several uh, super chats or comments yesterday where they were uh, people were saying, you know, what at what point they started following along. You know, maybe it was Cargo Dragon or Crew Dragon or SN8 or or whatever. And and I'm sure there's going to be people that are getting into space because of this because of this moment 100%. right here like wow the, the the biggest rocket ever like i think i've heard of saturn five and yeah i know that you know neil and buzz went to the moon and stuff but to see this real life rocket in their time i think there's going to mm -hmm. be a whole new swath of people that are getting into this into the space community because of this moment you know 100 i think it that's sounds a, a it's like thing. to be like it's inspirational but it is inspirational it draws a, a whole new crowd you know a hundred percent. I know it's not, it doesn't necessarily size and power doesn't always matter and stuff, but when you do, it's an easy thing to get people excited. Like, you know, why would I want to watch this Falcon nine mission or whatever? But if you tell them, Hey, watch the world's biggest, most powerful rocket ever fly. Mm -hmm. Like it's a pretty easy sell. Like, Oh sure. I'll check that. I just want to see what that looks like. How's that going to work? How will it, will it work? You know, like that's the, you know, I, I think we're going to get a whole otherwise, you know, watch even like Bob and Doug flying on DM two. Yeah. It was kind of like, well, you know, what's the headline that watched humans fly from the United States for the first time in nine years? I mean, that's awesome. It was awesome. Don't get me wrong. To us, like, yeah. It's not to like, are, yeah, yeah, like, like, but it's, it's also not like, well, so what? Like we've been still flying on Soyuz or, you know, it's, a lot of people will be like, well, I don't care, you know, <laughs> just in general. Yeah. So this will just be kind of one of those moments of like, oh, this is a huge milestone. This is a really, really big deal, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I had a question for you guys, and I think other than that, I think it's, you guys need to be st taking some questions probably. Um, yeah. But I want to know everyone's <laughs> timelines on when do you think we'll see static? I want your best guess on when will we see the first full static fire, you know, or like all up static fire of, of the booster? And when do you think we'll see launch? Like when will it leave the pad under the power of its own thrust? I, I want to be optimistic. So I'll just say launch by the end of the year static fire i think is a little easier to pull off um you know obviously lighting 29 raptors at once it's no small feat uh, but i think we could see static fire in the next i don't know month or two you know may, maybe there's some checkouts to to do before they before they do that and i don't know i i'm not sure that we'll see we won't see a static fire with Starship on top, right? I mean, I, I would think that they're, they're going to static fire him separately, probably. But yeah, yeah, that's that's my best guess. I'm just a photographer. <laughs> I like to say that. <laughs> what do you think, Jack? Jack, what do you think? Trying to think. So ship isn't fueled from the bottom anymore. It's fueled from an arm, right? Mm -hmm. That's something from, from the video that from just came today's, out. From today's, yeah. From today's. Is the booster Part two, fueled? Though. From yeah. the, like, does the booster need its own arm, or is that only ship that needs the arm? Basically, I'm asking about arms because that's sort of like, in order to get it to fly or even static fire, they got to get that or that orbital tank farm plumbed. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm not, I'm not. How about this? Static fires, whether whether that's three engines or six or nine, static fire campaign for the booster starts in. I don't know, two to three weeks. And then if everything goes well, which is a big if, they get to a full static fire, maybe like mid-September. And then I feel like they could fly anytime after September, but or, or around September. But everyone always talks about the FAA and the environmental review situation and the, you know the launch license and all of that and that's really what all, what makes me you know hesitate to, to, to give a date and that makes me want to say 2022 honestly because that that sort of thing is like a government bureaucracy kind of thing that just takes time yeah. but at the same time knowing what we now know about sn8 and how they kind of just sent it I mean, I don't think they'll do I that do. with an orbital, orbital launch. <laughs> I put it this way. I would be surprised 
but not shocked if they just said, this is taking too long, send it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so in that respect, but not shocked. Maybe, maybe October, maybe December, maybe they get to a point where they're like, to heck with your environmental review. We'll show you it's safe. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Tim? I think I'm... I'm I'm pretty similar to both of you guys. I I think we could maybe see Static Fire, where they actually go for 29 engines. Um, I I think we could see that maybe end of September, early October. Um, and I do want to preface that I don't have any insider information on this. This is and even if I did, we all know it changes every week anyway. Like Elon right. said that a hundred times. Like mm -hmm. even if Elon whispered and he's like, "Hey, we're gonna Static Fire in two weeks," I'd be like, "Sure, Elon." Like, <laughs> of course you are. You know, uh, I I think it'd be like I, I'm thinking still end of September or October. I I'm going to go ahead and say October 5th. Um, and then I think Jack's I'm also with Jack that I think there's going to be some weird hurdles and just things that are teething pains of the full stack and the whole operation of it and everything. And even the FAA type of stuff, I will still be very happy if we see it fly this year. Yeah. I'll be surprised, frankly, if we see it fly this year, honestly, you gotta it get is those now tiles August. to stick on. <laughs> yeah, those tiles are be sticking on. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm still I'm still thinking like January 2022. Yeah, that's a, that's a smart bet. That's I mean, there's a lot bet. of I'm... stuff. Yeah, there's cryo tests and and uh, ambient tests. There's you know all kinds of tests even before we get to static fire. And then yeah, yeah. What exactly. are the chances they're going to remove all 29? Possibly send them back to McGregor if they need to, or just some of them, or one or two of them. Who knows? Right, There's a lot yep. of a lot of hurdles before we get flight. I'm yep. I'm notorious for all of the times that I've come out practically to Boca Chica. I I tend to get here early, and frequently I'm here waiting for like weeks for something to happen. <laughs> um, thankfully that's not been a problem lately. In fact, it's been the opposite, where it's like, can can I get a day, please? Can I get a day? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, I don't know. It's just it's hard. I feel so like hard to tell. I, yeah, it's it's so hard to tell at this point, but yeah, I mean that's part of the fun, right? It's like yep, it's like it's like fishing but with rocket spotting. You know, they're like a scavenger hunt but with rockets. It's like what what are you going to be able to catch and when? And I don't know if it, like you said, if it goes by the end of the year, I think that that's something to be really really happy about. And if it doesn't, um, that's not a big deal. They're still moving crazy fast. Right, hundred percent. As uh. I just looked at the clock. We are getting sort of close towards the end, and I, I want to make sure uh, that we take some of these chat questions. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things people want to know, Tim. Um, let's take this <laughs> question from Who Me, um, and, and I like the spirit of this question. Uh, does Elon truly understand the fervor from all of us? Do you get the impression that he understands like the space community is really pushing behind him? Um, yeah. Has I it ever come he... up? <laughs> Um, not specifically like on one-on-one, -on -one, but just from what I can tell, I think he really, really likes that there's so many people. Actually, there's a little thing at the end of, of the last part that he kind of hints at that even like that he, mm -hmm. he, he understands that people are, are watching this stuff like crazy and he's excited that everyone's so excited, you know, that's, and how could you not be, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Pixelu Pixelius says, are the heat shield tiles on the alonarons hinges uh, bent slash curved? The al um, alonarons? Yeah. Is that on a, the, is that flaps, like a yeah, they, yeah. Is that a goofy name? Yeah, that's flaps? okay. Exactly. <laughs> alonarons. Yep. Um, yeah, they, they are curved. We didn't, I didn't get to go walk up, but, but I think Mary had, and Jack had some good images or Mary maybe of the, them curving over the, the yeah, edge Mary, is really Mary cool. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, Anno dominate. I think uh, the outer, the outer cover twenty Raptors is a bit looking out over or out from the steel cover. Will it not harm the outer twenty Raptors during reentry? Yeah, we, we talked about, a lot about that. How a lot of the guts of the Raptors stick out from, uh, from the bottom, of the booster. What, yeah. what were your thoughts on that when you when you noticed that? Did you expect that? Yeah, here we go. We're I'm thinking. I still think there's going to be some kind of 
cover that goes over all that. This that I was actually thinking about this yesterday that this might be the only opportunity we ever get to see something like this. Mm -hmm. So soak it in. Oh yeah. Because yeah. I'm thinking that from now on there will be uh, a cover similar to the you know the Octaweb of the Falcon Nine, how there's a nice little yep. shield around everything, right. and I think I think there will be something like that already before it flies. Yeah. Although, best part is no part, Tim. Best part <laughs> yeah. is no part. And right. stage zero can have infinite mass, so maybe there'll be like a cup on the on stage zero that they'll set it into. That I don't know, but then that doesn't solve the problem while it's flying. I gotta right, think while that it's flying. a Raptor engine can produce so much dang thrust and has to you know hold transfer all that load into the frame of the vehicle like a little bit of wind on the way up or way down probably well, i'm not worried about the wind the heat it's heat heating? No. Okay, yeah. yeah that makes sense yeah for sure a lot of a lot of hot gas can get stuck and the problem is that it doesn't circulate so you could you know you could have heat flow but it's uh, just stuck there you know um, well, if the best the part is no part, stuff. then you know maybe maybe the atmosphere will be ripping away parts of the raptor. You know, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. The best part Wait. is no part. So let's let's get them off of there. Best part is no part. <laughs> a rocket with no engines. What do we need uh, the engines for? <laughs> just throw the rocket up with the chopsticks with the Mexilla. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Villa Bowie says, uh, what do you guys think? Will the first orbital test be a success or will it rud on the OLM, the orbital launch mount? I don't think it'll rud think... on the mount. I think yeah, it'll I at least so. get a ways up into the air. I don't think, I mean, I think there's maybe like, a, you know, a small percentage of a risk of a pad fallback where it falls back onto the pad. Oh, but like I, I don't, years back. yeah, I don't expect that though. I think, most likely it fails somewhere high up during ascent, you know, way into the way into the into the main engine burn mm -hmm. or. Or just wildly succeed, you know, at this point, they've been hitting home runs just nonstop SN5, SN6, Starhopper, even though it got a little hairy there at the end, <laughs> the last six feet or so. I, I fully expect them to just nail the orbital flight like no, no problems. Maybe they'll. Yeah. You know the booster won't be able to come back the right way or maybe the ship won't do the thing they want exactly as it comes in but i bet you getting up to the velocity that they want to get this thing to it will be relatively a piece of cake that's my that's my gut i don't know what do you think tim yeah i i really hope it clears the pad and i think static fire and stuff will, will ensure that they have the best chance of that happening of it you know getting clear of the pad and, and making it a decent amount uh, up before anything could be potentially catastrophic. Um, I'm very curious about, like, you know how everyone always asks, why do they call out Max Q? Like, what's the point of Max Q? When's the last time a rocket failed at Max Q? And it, the answer is like, it's been a long time. Like, Max Q is almost never a failure point anymore because we understand vehicle dynamics and all that stuff pretty well now. But this is a vehicle I'm going to be a little, I'm going to be really like, <laughs> you know, like just worried about during Max Q. So, um, I, I see that being a, a potential point and just those upper level wins, you know, and all that stuff as the vehicles, you know, trying to pitch over and everything, the pitch program, it's, it's going to be, yeah, if it makes it to stage separation, I'm going to, I'm, it'll be another water moment or water towers can fly moment for me. Like I'm going to lose my mind a little bit. Cause I just, I, I just, I'm not sure I expect it at this point. Yeah. yeah rightfully so. That's a, it's a proper moment to lose your mind. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. it reminds me. Um, in, in part two, y'all started talking about um, sort of what the the first orbital flight will be like, and I couldn't tell if he was confirming that they'd really attempt to do a soft touchdown on the surface of the ocean or not. What was your impression? I, I've got to watch it again. I've only watched it once, and that's just not enough with a video like this. But did it seem like he was confirming that he that they would attempt a soft touchdown with the booster and or the ship? I really should have pushed on that more, but you could tell he's he's in that like I don't know what he, he I think he's they're still figuring it out. Is another thing that he said like he's like we still yeah. are are mission planning at this point. So yeah, I mean it's a matter of what, um, what they right. can get that approval for how too. He... I'm sure yeah. it's like yes. they, they they submit a, a a proposal to the FAA or whoever like hey we're gonna try and do this type of flight and they're like. Well, we're concerned about A, B, and F, and it's like, okay, well, what if we change F to be completely different? We don't do that, and for A and B, we change it around so you're more comfortable with it. And then there's a back and forth process, I imagine. That's I could just yep. be completely wrong, but that's my gut. Yeah, yeah. We're still I, we're I still in that. that kind of phase. 
I think they'll have no, I don't think they'll have too many qualms about bringing the booster and actually attempting a, a landing burn, you know, off the coast. Um, mm -hmm. Cause that's, I think that's going to be a lot of it for them is, is knowing, can they precisely come close enough to be able to do the, you know, the, the land in, inside stage zero and have stage zero catch it. They'll have to, they'll really want to practice that and really want to know is, are we, are we controlled at this point? And, and do we have the control authority we need and the precision we need? Um, so I, I, yeah, I, but as far as the, <laughs> frankly, it sounds like it almost made it seem like there's just not a ton of confidence in, in it surviving reentry, honestly. So it almost yes, makes it sound like I'm not look, even back. We all look back on the lead up to Falcon Heavy and it was the same sort of managing expectations, you know? Right. So Elon it, is really of... good about, about sandbagging expectations like that and sort of, <laughs> yeah. and, and that's like, we were talking about that earlier, uh, you know, where he's just very repeatedly like, we could be wrong. This could be a mistake. We could change. It's, and we're learning as we go. And it's like, yeah, it's the, it's a prototype. It's a development program. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Jack5341 just wanted to know what flies first, SLS, Super Heavy? Or, I guess, Starship in general. Is it, I right. don't think Super Heavy is going to fly by itself. <laughs> right. It's it's I one of those actually, questions yeah. everybody wants to ask. You don't even have to answer if you don't want to. But. No, I, actually, I, I honestly, I think the safer bet would be SLS, to be honest. Which is yeah. I really do. But it's true. You're right. Yeah, I really do expect that to hold because it should hold its schedule at this point. They've been they've been doing a yeah. pretty good job this year, finally, of of kind of holding schedule. And, you know, they've got all the things worked out with the FAA and all that stuff. You know, they, we know they've got that stuff filed away and, and ready to go. <laughs> yeah. um, there's just a lot less unknowns, you know, like the unknown unknowns of, of what has to happen between now and and Starship lifting off the pad are, are huge, you know. So I, I would actually I would actually bet on SLS. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much. That's going to be our last question. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, putting super chats and the new members and stuff. You know, we can't thank you enough. It obviously it helps us keep the lights on. Thank you, Tim, for making time to do this. This is this has been great. I hope uh, yeah, my I hope pleasure. everybody. Thanks, thanks for having me on and letting me just nerd out with you guys. It's been such a fun week, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just fun to be able to talk to people that are is into this stuff as, as, you know, as anybody, you guys are the, the primo, primo nerds, you know, I love it. And that's, we, you know, I appreciate what you guys do so much, of course. And yeah, it's just, it's going to be a crazy next couple of weeks and months. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah. Make sure if you're not already, uh, head on over to YouTube, uh, everyday astronaut subscribe there. Uh, he's got all kinds of great videos, high tech too. I mean, like he really digs deep um into uh the rocketry how how engines work i've learned a lot from from tim's videos i'll, I'll be honest um, russian rocket engine video can't wait right <laughs> that's the one we're waiting on for yeah waiting for next oh I'll, I'll shoot it when i get home finally like that's that'll be shot nice. when i get home and i've got a little bit of a journey to get home but when i do that's like it's ready i'm ready i can't wait i absolutely can't wait to finally shoot it so yeah. Awesome. Yep. And uh, of course, yeah. the, the Elon interview parts one and two are out. Make sure you watch those. Probably going to want to watch them multiple times because of the beeping and the and the whatnot. And there's just so much information being there's injected so into your brain. You're, you're going to miss something. Um, the and number it, of times it, I, I had to rewind and, and like re-listen, like, did he just really say that? Like, yeah, uh, yeah it's right. it's so information dense. That's really go, go watch them. Go, go watch them. Right. Right, do it. And then, of course, uh, I'd be remiss if I did not mention our members. Uh, we appreciate your monthly support. Helps us keep the lights on, even when there's not a whole lot going on, which is not a problem right now. There's been a lot of a lot of action. Um, but our, we definitely appreciate our members and, and need that support uh, to keep things rolling around here. Of course, if you like tangible things to show your support, we have our store uh, over at uh, nasaspaceflight.com. And with that, uh, I've been your host, Stephen Marr. Uh, over here, we've got Mr. Jack Byer. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, no worries. And Tim, it was really good to see you yesterday during the stack. I'm glad we got a little bit of a moment together and looking forward to covering more of, of the Starship events in the future alongside you, buddy. It's always a pleasure. Me too, yeah, Jack. Man, it was, got... it was awesome. And... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, and, and thanks guys for having having me on today. It, it means a lot, and I I just love being able to chat with the, the the rest of the community here too. It's it's always fun watching you guys, and you know I'm 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 your biggest fan too. So it's 
it's really fun to to keep watching what you guys do uh, every day. So thank you so much for what you guys do. Well, cool. That's a good vote of confidence right there. The links for everything is all in the chats. Our mods have put them in there uh, for Twitters and YouTubes and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you uh, you find those. And with that, I think we're going to buzz on out of here. We'll see you all next week. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yikes. You bet. Incur. We don't need any more of these.